Well, Matt, let, let's, let's go back to the start. When, when did you first realise that you were gay? I was 31, I think. So I can tell you the month. It was January 2018, which seems like a lifetime ago now. Yeah. And how did you, how did you know? Uh, so I was, I wouldn't say contacted, but I was relatively new to Instagram at the time. Uh, somebody decided to follow me on Instagram and like a few of my photos. I didn't know who that person was. Uh, so I decided to message that person and ask if I knew them. Uh, the answer was I didn't, but they wanted to know me. Um, and uh, for some strange reason, I wanted to know them as well. And that was kind of the first thing that I thought, well, this is a bit strange. Why do I feel that way? Why do I actually, why am I accepting that message? Why am I replying to that message? And why am I keen to continue the conversation? So it's quite a quick realization, but it was you know, the first time that that had happened to me, but um, yeah. Yeah. And how did, how did that make you feel, just, just getting those, those really new emotions and feelings? Yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. It was strange. It was, um, it was clearly odd. It was something that I hadn't experienced before. Um, but when I say odd, it was odd to me at that time. Um, it was pretty enlightening as well, because I think more so than that day, the few weeks and months that followed as, as that, if you call it a relationship, kind of grew and we, we grew to know each other a little bit better. Uh, it was some feelings that I hadn't ever felt before and I've been with girls for you know, 30 years and never managed to really connect with anybody. Um, it was uh, certainly never on a deeper emotional level. And for me, I've always kind of said, oh, it's because of work or it's because of football or it's because of my friends or I'm always so busy and I just don't have time for a girlfriend and I'm a commitment phobe. And it had got to the point by then where I actually genuinely thought that maybe there was something wrong with me in the sense that uh, was I capable of falling in love with somebody? Was I afraid of commitment? But then you start to look back and it makes no sense. Every other aspect of my life, I'm committed fully. Football, I'm all in. Work, I'm all in. Um, it's, it's a pretty crazy life uh, outside of that. But for some reason with relationships, I just wouldn't commit. Um, and now I know why. Yeah, so after that realisation, there must have been the moment where you got to tell people. So who, who was the first person that you, you confided in? <laughs> My PA at the time, actually. Um, I don't know why. I think sometimes I look back now and think it was probably the safest option. Ultimately, she worked for me. She told anyone I could have sacked her. <laughs> uh, clearly, that's a joke. But um, it just, I don't know, she wasn't part of my community. She wasn't my circle of friends. She was based in Peterborough, not local to Bury St Edmunds, and not connected to any of the football teams, didn't know any of my family, and yet we were still close and we spoke multiple times a day. So, um, yeah, it, it, it made sense. Yeah, and then there, there would have been a point where you'd have had to tell your teammates. What was what was that moment like? Um, what building up to it or the at, moment, at the moment? The moment you, yeah, it was great. It. Yeah, I mean everybody was. I mean you, you obviously get a few people saying, "Oh, well, we knew anyway," and you know all of that type of stuff. And but it was yeah, it was a good moment and fully supportive. They're a great bunch of lads and uh, good people. Completely wrongly, there is a bit of a stigma, isn't there, about about. You know, gay people in, in football. Yeah. Did, did that make you nervous when you, when you had to come out to your, your teammates? No, not at all. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of the reason I'm doing all of this thing is to break that stigma because it's nonsense, to be honest. Um, I, I think if anyone that knows me and, and what I'm like as a person, uh, I'm probably not someone that falls into the stereotype of, of what a gay guy is, barring, you know, have, having pretty uh, <laughs> poncy hair. But aside from that, uh, no, not at all. And, and I think that what people need to realise is that actually there are so many people that will feel that way and, and do have those feelings that are not happy or, or ready to come out because of what they feel they're going to get in terms of reaction. And that's the biggest thing that we need to change. What's it been like since? Has everyone been on board with it? I'm, I'm talking about players on your team, but also opposition as well. Uh, I've not had a single opponent say anything derogatory. I've had some pretty... Uh, tough opponents over the years that have actually come out and done the opposite. So some, some people that used to take great pleasure in trying to get under my skin, wind me up, get me sent off, um, have actually taken to social media to, to give nothing but support and praise for that. So I think there's certain things that, um, you know, the, the pl players now and, and most people nowadays, I think their heart's in the right place and they're, and they're certainly open to these kind of things. And so they should be as well. Um, and I think that that's the message to send out to everybody else, that actually it's a much more accepting world and a much more accepting environment, even the sport of football, than I think people give it credit for. And actually, that, that, that was going to be my next point, actually, because you're right, you, you have been accepted. No one's really made anything of it, have they? No. So why, why has no one had the confidence in professional football to come out? 
Yeah, I think there's loads of reasons. I think a lot of professionals will probably be getting advice on certain things as well. I think they'll be thinking about a whole host of potential issues. The whole thing around fans is a much bigger piece at that level. Yeah, we get four or 500 people coming to games, but when you've got 50, 60,000 people and half of them are against you, particularly in, in, in opposition grounds, I think that a lot of players will be thinking that they're going to be open to abuse from those, those fans. Opposing fans will do anything to get under this under the skin of the opposition. They'll try and get an advantage for their, their teammates. And you know, I've been in a position where my dad was a Premier League referee, and I've spent a lot of time from a very young age being in, in crowds of, of professional games. And they do shout and, and some pretty disgusting things at times. But it will be about anything. And if it's not about this, it'll be about something else. And my message is, actually, uh, you are going to get stick no matter what regardless of whether it's for living your life the way that you want to live it or whether it's because of the colour of your skin or something that your your wife's been reported to have done or it, it could be anything um, and they will literally find anything so it doesn't matter whether you're straight or gay you're going to get some level of, of abuse or stick from opposing fans at that level the other thing i think is brand endorsements i think players are obviously worried about whether brands will drop them because of that or whether they're going to be associated well with certain types of brands i think the opposite is true Ultimately, if you come out as a, as a gay player in the Premier League, any brand that drops you, well, there's going to be a lot of criticism and stick and maybe even boycotts for that. We, we've seen that before in, in other sensitive areas with minorities and, and absolutely right as well. But actually, what I think will happen is you'll get more endorsements. There'll be a lot of people, um, you'll be essentially hot property and a lot of people wanting to work with you and associate their brand with you. That's, that, that's what I was going to say, because there's actually an opportunity for someone, isn't there? to be a, a trailblazer, really. And, and, and actually, that's the most important thing for me. I think it gives somebody the opportunity to, and, and it's the whole reason I've done what I've done um, in non-league, it's to make a better future for the people that have gone before you. So everything that you're maybe suffering or, or people that you know of that have suffered, and don't forget, suicide's the biggest killer in men under 45 in this country. And I've got no doubt that one of the very big reasons for that will be sexuality, along with other things, of course. And if we can do our bit to stop that and, and put things right, then I think absolutely that's a great legacy to leave behind. And some of these professional footballers get a bad reputation for either being selfish or spoiled or overpaid or whatever else. But actually, there's, you know, there's a lot of good people in professional sport and they've got the opportunity there to make people's lives better. Can you see why some people who, who are gay would be reluctant to come out in a sporting environment? Or, or do you think, because it does take a lot of courage, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see why, absolutely, but I think sometimes you need to put the cause above yourself and if you've got a big personality or, or I think ultimately, I've had a lot of people reach out to me recently as well and, and those people are, are, I mean, just surprise the numbers of them, those people that are worried about the reaction that they're going to get from teammates, from fans, from family even, and clearly it always depends on the environment, the locality, the region. Uh, the culture, religion plays a part, all of those things that, you know, there's not a cookie cutter one size fits all here. But at the end of the day, ultimately, you've got the opportunity to make something better. And do you really, in your heart of hearts, want to keep friends and keep uh, close family members and keep ties with people that fundamentally have a massive issue with sexuality or race? I wouldn't want to be friends with a racist. I wouldn't want to be friends with a homophobe. I wouldn't want to be friends with someone that's sexist. So why would I be bothered about saying what I am in order to keep those people in my life? Ultimately, the amount of people that I've had contact me saying they've actually taken themselves out of football because they were afraid to reveal their sexuality. And for me, that's a massive issue. You've stopped playing the sport that you love, your hobby, your passion. You've taken yourself away from your teammates and your friends. So you self-ostracized just because you're afraid to say, I'm gay. Well, actually, the thing that you were afraid of in the first place, which is why you didn't come out, you've done to yourself. You've lost those friends, you've lost that football, you've lost that sport, you've lost that hobby. So why not actually give them the benefit of the doubt and give them the opportunity to surprise you and be, like I've received here, welcomed with open, open arms. You are the same person that you were before you told them that you were gay. And I think most people will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, spot on. Um, how proud are you of what, what you've achieved? Because like I said, you have been in, inundated with people getting in touch saying that you're really helping people. How, how good does that make you feel? Every time I get a message from somebody that, that says how much it's inspired them or how much it's helped them, uh, how it's inspired them to take action, how even if they're not ready to do it yet, they know that they're stronger and ready to do that. Of course it makes me proud, it makes me happy. It, it makes me realise that I'm making a difference to people and that's the whole point of, of giving up my time and doing these things is so that I can, like I said at the beginning, make people's future better than the past. My final question is, you know, how much do you long for a day where actually this isn't news, this is just irrelevant? 
be great, wouldn't it? I'd have a lot more free time now if it was. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, look, I, I think that there's a lot of work to be done until it's not news. But every single person that does what I've done now, going forward, this becomes less and less newsworthy and more and more normal. And that's the whole point of this. And hopefully in you know five to ten years' time that we don't have to be sat in stands at, at non-league grounds, freezing.